All right, hey there YouTube, it's been a little bit. Um, I figured this is my first character I'm gonna show off for the season. Um, and I'm gonna do things a little bit different this time. First, I'm gonna do the, uh, I'm gonna do this Maven invitation, I'm gonna do this Maven uh, boss fight, uh, just to kind of show off the build a little bit. And then I'll talk more about the gear, the tree, where to go with it, etc. cetera. Um, but I will say as well, this is a Blink Arrow Mirror Arrow character, otherwise known as Bama. So, hence the name, Sweet Home Bama, K Kona brother. Uh, and this is a level 95 Guardian right now. And yeah, with that, let's just go ahead and go on into Maven here. And, uh, and I'll show you kind of how this build is doing. Last time I fought her, I completely crushed her. So I can't wait to completely throw the fight somehow now. It's going to be great. That's that. That's the good damn. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Not that it matters if I have the bubble side or not, but I have to avoid having the bubbles. But yeah, this build has been. I, I started this league off with a lightning arrow dead eye, and ultimately, like, it's a solid build, but I just I wasn't feeling it that much. Like, it just wasn't that fun. Um, it's solid, but it just wasn't that exciting to me, and so I decided I wanted to make a build with this character because of the addition of the Prismatic Clones and the, um, the Prismatic Clones. Uh, I think that would be helpful. That is um, but the addition of Mirror Arrow of Prismatic and Blink Arrow of Bombarding. Uh, this build immediately was just like, that sounds interesting. Um, it could be a fun way to do a minion thing, right? So I threw this build together and it is surprised me. I thought I was going to have to switch this character back to something else. But no, this has completely been just destroying everything so far. And I think it's been awesome. Taking a few laps, eh? All right. Being able to kill her fast enough that I don't even have to worry about the puddles. Feels good, man. Feels good, man. Alright. not being as good. Alright. This was where I might mess it up. the last one. Wait, hello? Oh, did it start at top? Um, well, that goes to show. I completely, I zoned out on the first one or I just missed it. My bad. Classic. No, I don't want to take it. But yeah, outside of me being a, me, me being a dumbass and missing the... Uh, and missing the um, the memory phase there, you see this build just completely clapped her, which is uh, is great. So very nice. Uh, ooh, plus two levels on Verdi as well. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's this character. That's just like a quick showcase. Now we're gonna stand here while Oak is gonna yell at us, and the hulking miscreation here or whatever is gonna do that. So yeah. This is not a very, uh, a very quiet build, especially in your, and even in your hideout. Even in your hideout, you can't escape uh, how loud these minions are, fortunately. I'm gonna turn up the engine music. Probably just turn down their sound effects a little bit, too. <laughs> just, to, just to balance it out a little bit while I'm going over this. All right, so as you saw, that is the, that is the character that we're doing. Um, so first things first, let's just go over the links, uh, and then I'll talk about gear from there. So in here we have Mirror Arrow of Prismatic Clones. Um, something to note, and the reason why I am using both Prismatic Clones and Clones of Bombarding with Blink Arrow, uh, Blink Arrow Bombarding Clones, is that the line that says maximum of three clones that fire elemental arrows applies to both Mirror and Blink Arrow. They're essentially the same. 
So you can only have three clones out, which is very easy to hit that cap if you're using both versions. So using one of each is the better play, because then you can have six clones out, three that are doing bombarding, which is rain of arrows, and three that are doing essentially elemental hit. So that's the reason why there's two different ones. Um, but attached to this right now, this won't stay this way, but right now I just have Pierce and Returning Projectiles along with Fresh Meat. Uh, minion damage, which should be Awakened Minion damage, I'll, I'll be doing that pretty soon here. Uh, and then Elemental damage with attacks. This is not ideal, but it's really hard to off-color a Spine Bow. Uh, so ideally this will probably be three blues. Uh, probably three blues and two red is most likely what I'm thinking, maybe even four blues, uh, and I've replaced the Pierce support with just more crit multi. Um, if I got another red, if I had two red and three blue, then this would be, instead of returning proj, this would be volatile support probably, volatility. Um, and then mirror obviously, and elemental damage attack, I, I think is just, is, is still just best. It's hard to know exactly what the best um, gems are for this build right now because Path of Build, as of this recording, Path of Building still hasn't been uh, updated to actually have uh, all of the information on these gems. I know it's a lot of work. Um, so we'll just move straight over to Blink Arrow next as well. So Blink Arrow bombarding, like I was saying. Uh, and then attached to this, we have increased critical strikes, fresh meat, uh, awakened minion damage. I actually dropped one, so that goes on this one increased critical damage and added cold damage just for just to have something just to have some extra extra damage added on tacked onto these guys this will probably this will just turn into an awakened added cold but will probably remain to be just added cold damage i think this setup is probably best maybe slotting in a red maybe get rid of the increased critical strikes and put a red in here and either do ellie damage with attacks or volatility either way uh, is probably better uh but yeah, that's, I mean, that's the setup for Blink Arrow and Mirror Arrow. And then, let's see, Spectre-wise, we have Raised Spectres. This is a level 25, because we're getting uh, plus two levels from the Empower here. We're getting plus two levels on the hat, and then the Raised Spectre itself is level 21. So we have Raised Spectre, Animate Guardian, with attached to just Minion Life, Support, and then an Empower. Uh, so I have the Animate Guardian here, and these... Uh, I'll talk about Spectres here. Let's go over the rest of the characters. Uh, in an unset ring here, just have a flame dash. If you wanted to, you could put convocation here if you were more used to, say, blinking around with blink arrow. Uh, if you if you were okay with doing this instead of being able to flame dash as well, then you could do that. Um, it's just for me, it's a personal preference to use flame dash. Just it just feels a lot better to have two two movement skills. Kind of lets me be a bit easy, a bit a bit more free, a bit more easy. Um, and then here we have assassin's mark. Summon Carrion Golem attached to Feeding Frenzy uh, and Determination. Just generally good things. Feeding Frenzy is a very big buff for minions. Uh, Carrion Golem also very good for minions. Uh, you don't want the you don't want the other one. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. You don't want the one though that like it eats corpses and I think that's something else. Uh, you want this one because it adds additional fizz damage to your own golem minions. The uh, Transfigured one does not. Uh, Assassin's Mark was good for crit stuff. Extermination, armor, equals good, and then feeding friends like I was talking about. And over here we have Spirit Offering, uh, Purity Element, Desecrate, and Defiance Banner. So the reason why I'm running Defiance Banner is also because of Oak, who is over here yelling at me, which is also known as the Perfect Warlord. He both puts Endurance Charges on you, and he gives you Vitality, and it is a very strong and very high level Vitality. Uh, it's He is a very very good specter to have honestly um there are other options that you can run here uh so let's we'll just talk about specters very quickly also belt wise this is just some generic uh it's just darkness enthroned uh and it has some um, just generic jewels mini life some mini attack speed added damage uh resistance life whatever you need to fill in here is essentially what i would just put in for your ghastly eye jewels um yeah, we'll go over. I'll, I'll talk about which specters really quick, and then I'll kind of actually go over the gear from here. So, specter-wise, I'm using this is the perfect forest tiger. Yeah, perfect forest tiger, which gives you haste, um, and it also gives you. It also, as it attacks, it gives you and your minions frenzy charges. So this becomes a very good frenzy charge generator for you, uh, and is just overall very very good. I can't remember what level the haste is, but it's very good. Um. 
And actually, I'll show off as well with... So with Perfect Warlord here, the vitality he's casting. So let's see, what is my life regen right now? It's at 621. Let's just go to town really quick. Let's see what it is without vitality. So it was 621. Hopefully I don't crash. Uh, and it is now 347. So it's a, it's a really, really big vitality that he sticks on top of you. It's a very nice... Very nice thing that he gives you. Um, so that's why I'm running him. Also because I bought I bought and used, I think it's a perfect naval officer, which is also a very good one. Um, that one gives you plus 10 to fortification and a really high level precision aura. But unfortunately he died to one of the Maven invitations. And I was like, I'm not I'm not willing to buy that again right now. It's expensive. It's like four he's like four divines. Um, I'll probably buy one. Uh, another one in the future, and probably replace the perfect perfect meat sack over here. Maybe perfect meat sack here really just gives um, he gives your minions forty percent more life, uh, and has he, I think he has the highest life of all specters. So this guy is just really thick, adds a lot of thickness to your specters, so they don't die. So he's nice in that regard. Um, but I might replace him as long as I feel like the specters will actually survive on their own. We shall see. Uh, and then the last one is this Hulk, perfect hulking miscreation, which I have another one right here. Um, and that is because it gives your nearby constructs 100% increased damage and 30% increased, uh, or 30% attack and cast speed. And it also gives nearby allies 20% of his damage as extra light. Uh, I will tell you a little secret right now. Your clones are constructs. So therefore, they get the bonuses that the Hulking Miscreation uh, provides them. So that's just a lot of additional attack speed, a lot of additional damage, and the Fizz's Lightning is also very, very nice. Um, yeah. So with that, we'll just roll into we'll just roll into gear now. Spectre-wise, you can do basically anything. I had a lower tier setup. I was just using a non-perfect Hulking, uh, and then just like a meat sack, a Pain Artist. Pain Artist gives your nearby minions 30% crit multi, which is also good and it's also fine um so yeah just whatever you're able to use realistically uh, and then eventually make your upgrades uh, ideally you do want the tiger ideally you do want the perfect hulking miscreation but i think the other two are kind of flexible it just depends on how well your specters are living and how comfortable you are with them um but otherwise so let's go over the items so an important thing to keep in mind is that your minions and by minions i mean your mirror and blink arrow are both using are using copies of both your bow and your quiver so that means that you want to put as much flat damage on them as you possibly can. And also, if you can, like with the mod here and on the mod and a mod that I've crafted on the quiver, uh, but that's not as important with the tiger. Regardless, um, you want to put as much base attack damage as you can on them, ideally elemental damage. And the other thing that you can do is you can put here where you have 7% chance to gain a power charge on Critical Strike, which is a Shaper mod. It gives you global crit multi and it gives you uh, gain power charge on critical strike. Since they're using your bow, they get that mod as well, which means that they'll generate power charges for themselves and let themselves and let themselves you know start up and cycle up that way. So it's a very very good idea, I think, to have a uh, shaper bow or just something that some way to give them power charges. I think realistically, uh, the assassin's mark quality will also. Um, the Assassin's Mark quality will also apply to your minions. I'm pretty sure. I still have the quality, um, but I'm pretty sure that will also apply to them. So just any way to give them uh, power charges. But I liked using uh, this kind of interesting way. Also because I happen to roll the uh, attack speed and chance to deal double damage on this bow. The only thing that I'm not certain of at, uh, as I'm looking at the bow, though, is the two level socketed bow gems. Like, Mirror Arrow is a bow gem, so it's level 27 right now. But I don't think... I don't know how much bow levels will actually matter to Prismatic Clones. I think it's not that much, um, but I need POB to be updated. I'm gonna, potentially what will happen is I will reroll the bow. I will just lock suffixes and then reroll with like cold or reroll with lightning at harvest um, to get rid of the plus two levels and hopefully hit some high tier elemental damage instead, flat alley damage instead. Um, but I'm still kind of waiting to see what happens there. Also, the accuracy rating on this, that's the only suffix that really doesn't matter. Ideally, you'd have uh, increased critical strike chance there, but it is what it is. Uh, and we'll just talk about the quiver, because that's just directly with it as well. 
so just remember uh, all that you want is just as much flat as you can. I'm probably going to be looking to get a better quiver pretty soon here, but I liked the increased, uh, I liked the essence hit on this particular one because it hit tier one lightning damage to attacks, some really good, uh, pretty decent life roll on it. Uh, we have global crit multi, the accuracy rating again doesn't really matter. But then crafting the suffix here for increased global crit strike chance along with uh, frenzy charge on crit strike uh, is quite nice for the. Uh, is quite nice for the sustainability of charges on your on your clones here. So that's it's decent. This this will be replaced more than likely. Uh, the reason why I went with Elder in the first place is I think there's another Elder mod that gives you frenzy charges on hit if memory serves. Um, but honestly, it'll probably just be by a by a quiver that has a lot of a lot of base added element damage, and I think that's what I'll be doing. Or trying to craft one myself. Um, yeah, that's the that's the bone of the quiver. Also, base wise, primal arrow is probably the best. Uh, other options though are like um, broadhead for the increased attack speed, which is very good. You could probably do a vile arrow quiver, which just gives uh, fizz's extra chaos, I believe. So vile quiver is fine. Um, whatever else you want to do. Uh, but then yeah, and then we'll go over the. So next up we have the helmet here. This is. Kind of a nothing burger of a hat, but at the same time, it has plus two levels of all minion skill gems, which for the sake of specters and actually having four specters is entirely necessary for this build. Um, but it has life regen. It has some generic other decent stuff on it. Um, something that I did note that could potentially be pretty good with having an ES base helmet, you probably want a hybrid armor ES base and try to just roll a good amount of ES on it anyway. Um, specifically because of this one. Uh, oh, also we're going primalist for the uh, for the wildwood. Um, but for this, minions gain added fizz damage equal to five percent of maximum energy shield on your equipment. Health. So I believe that having a armor ES base is probably better. You can probably roll one that even has around this same amount of energy shield, or at least has some decent amount of energy shield and armor. Um, and it's probably just better, honestly. Uh, but then you can, and the, but then you can get this mod for the charms on the Corvine charms, which is very strong. Uh, and I would probably stack a few of those. Maybe try to get like a guardian mixed with the necromancer one, um, and just and just try to do that because we just, we want the onslaught from guardian, and we want the added fizz damage or energy shield on your equipped helmet, most likely from Necro. I think those two are the best uh, from what I've seen, from what I've looked around at for this build anyway. Um, but yeah, that is it for the hat. So the other most important thing for this build, uh, and I'll talk about alternatives for this build as well uh, towards the end, is Flesh Crafter here. Flesh Crafter, essentially the biggest, the biggest deal with it is it converts some of your minions life to energy shield, it's per chaos res, uh, and then while they have energy shield, their hits ignore el monster elemental resistances. So that just lets your your arrow boys here do an insane amount of elemental damage because they're just, they just completely ignore your, the uh, enemy's elemental resistances. As a side note, if you take Eldritch Battery, the energy shield that you have applies to your clones. They will like copy that you have energy shield. And so if you have Eldritch Battery on, then they will copy that and they will not have energy shield. And I'm not sure, I haven't used I haven't used this skill long enough, so I don't know if like running discipline somewhere instead fixes that. I I really don't know. That I'm not certain of. It's possible that if you run Discipline, they get the Energy Shield back and Eldritch Battery becomes worth using. I don't know. I really don't. This is my first time using this, uh, and I think the build has just come together very well, and I'm fine with it uh, where it is right now. Uh, Ring-wise, we basically just have uh, increased attributes, some life, some resistance, just generically decent stuff. Uh, I fractured this dex, or we I, I bought this fractured just because you need a lot of dexterity to use a spine bow. Um, and we are using a spine bow, just really quick. We're using a spine bow because it has a good attack time at 1.4 as a base, and it has the high, I believe the highest, or like second highest critical strike chance at 6.5% as a base. So it's just a very good bow 
for the crit purposes that we're doing, but it does require a lot of dexterity to build up to. So, hence, rings with dexterity, fitting dexterity into eye jewels or wherever else you can fit dexterity. Um, this ring over here, this bone ring, it's not anything spectacular. Ideally, I'll probably get a better one, but the increased attack and cast speed being tier one and then the resistances on it were good and they were what I needed. Evasion rating really doesn't matter if that was armor, that'd be better, uh, or ideally just a better max life roll, and would probably like to have an open prefix so I could craft uh, non-channeling skills minus cost. Uh, and then for our amulet here, I'm just using a replica dragon fang that has plus three levels of mirror arrow gems. You can do all blink arrow gems, whatever you want, but I wanted to use this specifically because of the reduced attribute requirements, honestly. Um, because yeah, again, like I said, it takes a lot of dexterity, so we just, just any way to reduce that is nice. The plus three levels might not matter that much, but the rest of the, the rest of the amulet, regardless, is still pretty good. And we are anointing death attunement specifically for the max specters. That's it. That's literally all that we're taking, but it's too many points to go. I think it's, it's an extra five points to go up this way, and it's just too many points to take. So we're just going to anoint it. There aren't too many other better anoints anyway, so that's just the best way to go about it. Um, yeah, and then uh, glove-wise here, we just have just a generic pair of rare gauntlets. Life, uh, if you spam fear essence on gloves, that makes your minions do more damage. Yep, minions do increase damage. And then there is a searing exarch implicit that also makes them do more damage. I'll be trying to roll that to a higher modifier tier later. Otherwise, just resistances, life, you're good to go. You can, while you're leveling or in the early game, use Grip of the Council as well. This gives your minions 20% fizz as extra cold. It's a good leveling. Uh, it's a good leveling unique. It's good for the starting into maps and kind of getting your feet, you know, landing on, landing on your uh, landing on your feet and getting going. It still adds a lot of damage, but ultimately, rare gloves are probably just better. Boot wise, again. Generic, we have dexterity, we have life, we have resistances, all that good stuff. Uh, implicit wise could roll better on the Searing Exarch and all that good stuff. Probably just like increased chaos res and action speed. Though I don't know if, uh, or just, or move speed. But I can't remember which one rolls where, where if both of those can roll. Either way. Uh, and then Stygian, the, uh, the Darkness Enthroned. This one's a 96% roll. I think it was right around two divines. Um, and yeah, that's, that is all the gear. It's relatively generic. The most important things that I'm going to be looking to replace is probably, uh, look at crafting the bow whenever I can, whenever I can actually look at POB. Um, but the bow probably will be changed. This ring, potentially, the quiver, and these boots. The boots could just be rolled to be slightly better. They aren't, they aren't bad, they just could be better. Um, and otherwise, that's about it. So let's go over... Oh, uh, I guess I'll quickly talk about other Ghastly Eye Jewels, just for all the jewel slots. Ghastly Eye Jewel-wise, you're literally just looking for life and a lot of flat added. Um, some of these jewels could used to be replaced, some of them could used to be better. Uh, this jewel was just pretty good that dropped. This jewel... Uh, this jewel right here... Oh, uh, Minion Skill Increased Damage, if you used a Minion Skill recently, also a good mod, because, again, we're using Minion Skills all the time. But otherwise, the rest of that jewel kind of sucks. So that needs to be replaced. Uh, but yeah, otherwise there's a lot of flat added. If you need more resistances, if you need more life, if you need more dexterity, do what you have to. Fit it in. Uh, fit it into the ghastly eyes. Um, but otherwise, skill tree wise, um, it's probably pretty generic. I would just say, uh, I'd say pretty generic as far as minion skill trees go. The only thing uh, that is a little bit out of the ordinary for one of these kinds of builds is this node over here, Potency of Will. We are traveling decently far over here to get it, but the increased skill effect duration is very big, and so is the more skill effect duration. It's both big for being Guardian, and it's both big, and it's also big for using fresh meat support, because fresh meat gives you only, uh, gives your minions Wakened Fury and Adrenaline for 10% of their duration, the max of 10 seconds. These minions with those nodes last about 46 seconds, so that means that 4.6 seconds, they're gonna have Adrenaline and Wake and Fury, which is the increased crit stuff. 
So it's kind of important that you have more skill effect duration so that you can build up to having fresh meat up longer. Uh, and that's that's really it. It also applies to your Sentinel of Radiance, which is the, the guardian, one of the guardian minions. And same with the, actually the little guys to follow you around as well. Um, it applies to him as well. So he also lasts for 46 seconds, roughly. Uh, but otherwise, a lot of just kind of generic stuff. You know, we're taking spiritual command because at the end of the day, we're still attacking. We don't want to be going super slow with the bow as we're firing off our skills. So we're just kind of taking that. Sacrifice, just for regeneration, making sure that our monsters live a little bit, along with minions leeching 1% of damage as life. Again, just keep their survivability up. During bond, again, skill effect duration and increased minion duration. Very good. Uh, and then we're making our way over here. Reward of the Dead. We want Mystic Bulwark just for the mana reservation. You probably don't actually need increased mana reservation. Like, I think I have, I have plenty of mana reservation here. I could probably drop these three points if I want. Uh, but I don't really know where I'd put them. I guess probably here or maybe some of these small life nodes. But otherwise, we're taking a large cluster here. This one has Call of the Slaughter, Feasting Fiends, Race of Pillage. Uh, Feasting Fiends, just more li uh, life, damage, leech. Uh, call the slaughter damage if they've been made recently which the recently recently tag applies to the last four seconds so that about works with uh that works with fresh meat very well also uh and then raisin pillage isn't anything crazy but it gives you increased uh it gains gives your monsters more fizz extra fire which fizz is extra very good for this build uh since we're a crit note since we're a crit build we're taking fearsome force we're taking redemption we're taking righteous army um down here, we're taking Grave Pact. We want the increased effect offerings. Something to note, because I kept forgetting, something to note is that you do not need the minions penetrate 8% of cursed enemies' elemental resistances, because again, we are completely ignoring them with Flesh Crafter. I keep forgetting that, and I've had a few things specced, or I used elemental weakness for a little while, and then I went, wait, I don't care about that. So just, just keep that in mind. You don't need to worry about any kind of elemental penetration. Nothing about re reducing monster resistances. You don't need exposure. You don't need anything. Just do that. Uh, this, and then this cluster over here, which we're taking off of this side, you probably could rearrange the tree as well and come out the bottom side instead. That's probably more life and could potentially just be better. Um, also taking combat stamina and reduced extra damage from crits. Again, pretty decent. Uh, this cluster jewel over here, though, it just has Call to the Slaughter for the uh, for that node. Otherwise, this isn't too crazy. It just has Armor Evasion, Chaos Resistance. Chaos Resistance is hard to come by, and it's the one thing that kills me a lot still right now. Uh, that is something I'll hopefully fix, maybe with some of these gear updates, maybe with my uh, maybe with my boots, maybe with my ring. Maybe this just maybe instead of being a bone ring, this becomes an amethyst ring. I don't know. Um, but Chaos Resistance is still the one thing in the game that kills me a lot. And there's a lot of Chaos resist or chaos Damaging enemies in the Wildwood. Any of the cultist enemies, any of the purple enemies, a lot of those guys do Chaos Damage and they will destroy you in there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically the tree. Again, this will all be down in the uh, description as well. It'll just be, it'll be with whatever POV exists right now, so the mirror arrow and blink arrow that are there in the tree are not, um, are not the prismatic and bombarding version. Whenever those get updated, I'll try to remember to come back and update the link with that as well. Um, and then, uh, ascendancy-wise, Radiant Crusade, uh, while you're leveling, Radiant Crusade, Unwavering Crusade, just get your big minions out, they help a lot, make things very smooth. Bastion of Hope, very good, just lets you block. We're a bow build. So we don't have a shield or anything, so having a uh, having a chance to block and giving your minions a chance to block is good. Radiant Faith, I'll leave up to you. I'm using Radiant Faith, I just like having more armor, have a little bit of the extra thickness built in, but again, I have a lot of unreserved mana too, so it might not be that good. You could instead go Time of Need if you really want to. We're not using Link Skills, so... Uh, but time of need could potentially be a replacement depending on what feels more comfortable to you and what you like more. And that is basically the guardian here. That is basically this old man. Uh, while you're leveling as well, you can use these literally starting at level 10. So I personally, I literally just leveled with these. Bombarding clones covers a ton of space. And so it is a very, very strong 
very very strong uh, early game skill honestly uh, and I literally leveled with this and was completely fine. I used a Karui Ward in my amulet slot and I used a Quill Rain and I just ran around like that. I was on a 4 link for pretty much the majority of the game uh, and then once I got to end game I was on a 5 link for a lot of it and I was still just crushing everything. This build has surprised me. This might honestly be, be one of the builds uh, of all time. Uh, so I'll very quickly do a quick mention as far as uh, an alternative route that you could go as well with this build. I don't think it's as strong, uh, but it might be a bit tanky. So that's kind of just dependent on what you want to do. You could potentially, instead of running Fleshcrafter, because no, I do not recommend that you do both of these simultaneously, you could run Ancient Skull. Uh, Ancient Skull gives you a ton more crit chance. Even as a base, we have three power charges. They gave... They have 150% increased critical strike chance then for all of your minions. Uh, and when they hear the voices, as it were, um, they have a bunch of increased attack speed and damage. I mean, they don't listen to you, but real skill doesn't matter. So Ancient Skull is very strong, and it is a really good option. Don't run it with Fleshcrafter, because your minions will kill themselves. I watched, uh, I watched a lot as my specters would just like die and just completely pop, or my, uh, or my carrying golem I kept having to resummon because it would just die a lot. Um, so don't run these two together because this trans, this moves a lot of their life to energy shield. So I'd recommend if you're going to do that, do a rare chest piece, maybe a sadist scarab. No, 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 not a sadist scarab. I can't remember the name of the uh, high tier armor uh, energy shield base, but I would just do that. Um, so that's up to you. It could also be a better early game option because six linked Fleshcrafter is very expensive. I just happened to get lucky in six link this one. Um, and yeah, so just do either Ancient Skull or Fleshcrafter. Uh, the option, the option is totally yours. Regardless, I think that is basically the build. I, show, I showed off the Maven kill very quickly. Uh, I went over all the gear, all that good stuff. Again, like I said, also, uh, Wildwood Ascendancy wise, you're taking Primalist. Might of the bear, and just go all the way up, take all your charms. Try to find one with the guardian that gives near, well, you, well, there's at least near five, five nearby allies, you allies have onslaught, sorry, can't read. Uh, and then just generic added fizz as energy shield. This one up here is just the occultist pop node. I wanted to test it, I don't think it's good. Um, I have barely noticed it go off because it's only a 9% chance. And it is only tier, this is only tier 2 as well, but it's only a 9% chance, and I just really haven't noticed it. So I just don't, I don't think that's worth it. I would just replace it with another, uh, extra fizz per energy shield on your hat. Regardless, that's the build. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, I hope you've been having a lot of fun with this league. The league itself, while has had some stability issues, we'll say, has been overall fantastic so far, and I am so excited to keep trying out new... Um, new gems, new fun stuff, new cool things. Um, but this build has absolutely taken me by storm right now and has just completely blown me away with how good it is. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep playing this guy for a little bit longer. Uh, try to keep, try to try to complete some challenges. And uh, I think once POB gets updated with some gem info, then I'll really start cooking and see if I can find something else. That is even more spicy. But in the meantime, this build is a ton of fun. I hope you're all enjoying. Hope you're all having a good time. Take it easy. As always, everything will be listed down below. Um, and if you have any questions, I try to answer comments as often as possible. So, YouTube, hope you enjoy. Bye-bye now.